Today we're going to talk about how to make a spout to go on a jug or juicer. When we're talking about a spout in this context, we're not talking about a teapot spout. We're just talking about how to take the rim of a existing object. So it could be wheel thrown or it could be hand built. Um, it needs to be in the green stage though. And how to manipulate the clay to form a spout. Essentially, I mean a little jug like this. This is a little wheel thrown marbled jug that has got cobalt blue pigment in it. So what I did was I mixed up some cobalt blue pigment into some clay and then I marbled it on the wheel. I didn't think at the time when I actually made this, it was a really, really light blue. And then when I fired it, it turned like this bright blue. Still really beautiful, but that's what it looks like unglazed. So the white and the blue. Pretty cool. And then this part here, if you can see those shapes, that's just me cutting away with the trim tool. So there's so many possibilities with clay, as you can see just from these examples. So you can see that this spout is just very subtle on this one. You can also do it for a juicer. So you would juice here and then pour it. This one was thrown on the wheel. This is a little bottle with a spout, which is pretty cute. So there's lots of different ways that you can use a spout to um, either enhance a vase or you can use it for like a little milk jug or a juice jug. So this juicer started as a perfectly round juicer and then I created the spout here in the exact same way that I'm going to show you in the video. Because the focus is on spouts today I'm just going to quickly make a cup so we'll do a time lapse and then um, I'll show you how we're going to turn that cup into a jug. If you're looking to learn how to make a mug or a cup to start with this video, I'll just put the link up here. Once you've got the rough shape that you're happy with, and I'm going to change camera angles in a minute. The main thing for a spout that you need is you need water and you need to know where your fingers will go. So what we're going to do is you're going to have I've got my pointer and my middle finger. We're going to put those on either side where we want the spout. Then I'm going, they are just going to hold that position there. I'm going to use my other pointer wet finger and I'm going to rub on the inside and what that's going to do is it's going to drag thin this clay out and drag it. I'm going to hold my two fingers here, pointer, middle finger. Generally you put your spout opposite your handle. Um, you don't have to have a handle though. And then I'm going to wet my fingers and I'm going to start by pulling up just to thin that out a little bit. And then I'm going to use my finger and I'm just going to and then we have our little spout. And I think the biggest keys to getting a good pour with your spout too is that you have a sharp little edge here so that when the water falls out it kind of and you pour pull it up is that it will cut the water and then it won't drip everywhere. When we talk about pouring our spout, in terms of by having a sharp edge, I don't mean so sharp that you can cut yourself on it. I mean just sharp enough that it will cut through the water. So um, please do make sure that maybe your spout when you are finishing. In terms of having like a really thick spout, um, you're likely to have like a lot of water dripping. Whereas if you just have a thin spout that's got like a nice flatter edge on it, it will kind of cut through that water when you pull up and then you won't get drips going everywhere. The main issue that you'll probably have with making a spout is if your clay gets too thin, it will kind of crack or if you go too fast with when you move your finger, it, will, it could like crack 
and I'm not talking about cracking when it's drying, it will crack straight away. So for example, if it was too thin, you might get like a, I suppose a tear would be a better word to use. Um, you might get a tear here. What you can do if that happens is just pull, <laughs> pull your spout back up, round it off a little bit and then have another go. Um, or you can kind of just run your finger over it again. Two fingers. And then I'm just gonna thin it a little bit. And then I'm just going to pull it through. And there's your little spout. Easy as pie. So it's been a day since I filmed building this cup. So this one is, it's still like a little bit, I don't know if you can see that moving there, but it's still a little bit green um, in, like in terms of being able to manipulate it a little bit. I've smoothed it off a bit and I still will smooth it off a little bit more uh, before it gets fired. Now this is what my little spout is looking like at the moment. So I'll need to smooth that over a little bit um, before I bisque fire it. And usually after I do a bisque firing, I sand on my work as well. But I really like the aesthetic where you can see the finger pressure and the marks made by the artist. I think that that's um, something really beneficial about hand-built work. Um, however, like I don't want it to look messy. So I usually, like I smooth it out once it's just been made. I'll go over it again before it goes into a bisque. And then once I take it out of a bisque, I will wet sand it. Always sand wet with clay. I think you, if you've seen my other videos, you know that I've mentioned that before. It does show with just these two objects, the difference between, you know, like depending on where you place your fingers, you'll have a larger spout or smaller spout. So obviously my fingers would have been placed further apart here. They would have been close together for this one here. So it's pretty cool. You can kind of customize. That's all for today. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please subscribe and I will see you next time.